Hello, hello. No introduction needed. That's okay. I don't need to hear about my past or my cats. All right. Uh, this story is about uh, a camera rental house. In the film and TV uh, business, uh, productions rent their camera equipment from a company. They come to a place where I would work and rent the equipment. And this is a lovely story about that place. I worked at a camera rental house, and this was a <clears throat> Dilbert cartoon-like cubicle job from hell. For management, uh, an atmosphere of every man for himself. And my boss, a five-foot, six-inch middle manager just, south, just outside the upper crust with a chip on his shoulder bigger than he was. I was always good in all the jobs I had my whole life. I worked hard, played by the rules, helped my co-workers, uh, did my best to surpass my boss's expectations, and I always left on a good note. <clears throat> what was it like working there? <laughs> Let me tell you. And I'd like some musical accompaniment when I tell you. <laughs> That's okay. <clears throat> uh, to protect the guilty and for my safety, let's call my former boss, not by his real name, let's call him Satan. Um, <clears throat> when Satan wanted me to come to his office, he would address me on the company's walkie-talkie system the way that Ricky Ricardo would address Lucy after she got caught doing something wrong. Lauren, please come to my office, he would say. I'd fight back with a chipper. Sure thing, Satan. I think my job, my joy for the possibilities of a fulfilling, humorous life seemed only to aggravate him more. For the first couple of years, my boss seemed to tolerate my private life. He was okay with my occasional schedule requests to take a weekly improv or stand-up class after regular business hours. And then one day... Satan changed his mind and called me into his office. Lauren, come to my office, please. Lauren, no more of your classes. Wait, what, I can't take any classes on my own time, I asked. Yes, I don't want you taking any more classes just in case we might need you to stay. Uh, stay when, I wondered. Whenever, he replied. <laughs> Another time, oh, it gets better. I'm helping out this customer, and Satan walks by, stops for a few minutes, and then says in front of us and a handful of co-workers, Lauren, why don't you go upstairs? I'll take over from here. No, 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 I got it, Satan. We're figuring this out, I said, probably cheerfully, which must have made his blood boil, because then he said in front of everyone, Lauren, go upstairs and find some cables or something to clean. Now that made my blood boil. A short time later in one of those please close the door behind you meetings, he yells at me for disobeying him. Well, but wait, Satan, I said, I was helping the customer out. I didn't need your help. And you berated me in front of him and my coworkers. Surprisingly, I've actually learned a few things on my own without your help. Oh, boy. In a fit of anger, he says, Lauren, I will tell you what you can learn and when you can learn it. There is always an ample supply of lightning and brimstone in hell. It took that moment for me to realize what happens when you go from job to job and career to career in life, floating kind of through life. You'll eventually run into a boss who's more happy to run your life than you are. I had taken some group classes and private coaching sessions with a woman named Christine Aller by the time this incident occurred. Now, Christine is this wonderful career strategist who helps people and actors move their careers forward. On January 15th, 2011, because that's the anniversary that I will always remember, I met with Christine for three and a half hours where she helped me craft an escape plan from a job I hated. Some of you may have remembered the movie Shawshank Redemption. My job was Shawshank Redemption, my boss, the warden. I was Andy Dufresne, and Christine Aller was the inscription that red carves out on the ceiling, the one that said, get busy living or get busy dying. Visa. I, that was uh, Morgan Freeman, okay. All right. <laughs> Over the next four months, Christine told me I was to get the ball rolling on my nascent voiceover career, meet voice actors, have coffee dates, pick their brains, network, attend industry functions. 
In the meantime, do your work and remain a good, loyal employee. Basically, like Shawshank, I was digging a tunnel out of the prison one spoonful at a time. The plan was to quit by May 31st. Satan got there first. I was fired on May 2nd for insubordination. Damn, they fired me before I could quit. Damn you bastards. Oh, I get unemployment? Okay. <laughs> My three and a half year crawl through a storm drain full of shit was over. Most importantly, I was leaving that job and that career with my feet already firmly planted on the ground towards a career in voiceover. That was the first of my toughest challenges. So why, why did I pick voiceover? Well, a girl on a student film I had worked on five years earlier mentioned that she had taken a voiceover class once. I loved cartoons, it sounded cool, and I once auditioned for a voiceover project at a children's educational software company my wife worked for. I met the teacher, I took the voiceover class and I liked it. Magical, not one of those something I always had to do my whole life kind of things. Less than two months after getting fired, I got my first paid voiceover gig. My second voiceover gig, oh, I love this, dubbing voices on a Chinese martial arts movie called Triad Wars. I was doing voices on a freaking kung fu movie. <laughs> it was great. Here's my f full circle moment. Shortly before I got the job at this camera rental house, I worked on a movie with a friend of mine. And on the first few days of shooting, we were shooting at a carpet store in the valley where the main character movie works. It was his boss, played by a man named Jerry Lambert, whose improvisation in those scenes was so funny, so amazing, and so awe-inspiring. It was at that moment when I realized that I was working on the wrong side of the lens. Instead of being behind the camera, I wanted to be in front of it. Fast forward to 2013, and I get the opportunity to do an improv jam with a bunch of big-time A-list uh, cartoon voice actors. And guess who walks in the door? Jerry freaking Lambert, the guy from the carpet store scene that we shot six years earlier. So I've come to realize that all those years in production that I did, I was working close to the limelight because I was too scared to be in the limelight. But not anymore. Thank you.